ended up kind of building an audience through there. Um, and now I'm on a podcast with you flying over the coast mountains. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Matt Mosbeen and you are on air with Radio Chatter. Joining us on the flight deck today, we've got Taylor Michael Burke. He's a professional adventure photographer whose portfolio spans from magazines to conservation-focused brands and even government travel associations. He's taken his camera to nearly every corner of the planet and most recently now to one of the most remote mountain ranges in British Columbia. Taylor, welcome to the show. Sweet. Thanks for having me, man. This is incredible. How is our lighting looking today? Uh, it's on point. We went a uh, little later than we were probably planning on it, but I don't think anyone's complaining about it, though. Not at all. I mean, I was trying to push for a little bit of a later start to, to catch that evening light. So, yeah, it all worked out for the better. So we're on our way somewhere really special. Um, Taylor and I have been trying for probably about eight months to get to uh, Mount Waddington, and we've finally done it here. We're over the coastal BC mountains. And um, pretty soon we'll be over Mount Waddington, and it is the tallest mountain in British Columbia. And fun fact, it's actually the tallest mountain in Canada that doesn't lie in the Yukon. So, I mean, it's just an average walk in the park for Taylor, but we're super excited to be here at uh, 9,000 feet today, and we are climbing. A big shout out to Rumble Super Shake also for keeping us fueled and hydrated before this crazy adventure. It's time for a game called Did You Dabble With It? I've got some subjects, topics, pastimes here. Some of them have some truth to them, and some of them are a complete shot in the dark. I'll say the subject, and then you say in rapid-fire sequence, if you did indeed dabble with it. Let's get started. Wolfpack. Fuck yeah. Naval warfare strategy games. Don't even know what that is. Easy bake ovens. Uh, I think my cousin had one when I was young, and I used it. <laughs> Nicorette gum. No. Sorry, I don't write these things. Incense. Incense? Yeah, not incest, but incense. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, okay, just want to make sure. Just make sure I read. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it was yeah, incense. Yeah. Um, mullets. Uh, heavy. Yeah, heavy, heavy user yes. of the mullet. Hard, hard yes. PEI insults. Uh, I love PEI. Oh, yeah? I'll come over to your house and slam your fucking cupboards. <laughs> There's a video. We got to watch it sometime. <laughs> okay. Cool whip? Uh, yep. Weave in conditioner. Weave in conditioner. Weave weave in conditioner, like it stays in. Uh no. Um didgeridoos. Didgeridoos, yeah. French presses. Uh yeah. Yeah, I dabble with coffee. Luxury couture brands such as Gucci and Louis Vuitton. When I was younger. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm not even ashamed. Club Penguin. Club Penguin well, sounds familiar. A tribe called Quest. Yeah. Cotton Jones. Oh yeah. Gerbils. Uh, no. The Toyota 4Runner. Hell yeah. The Rabbit Hole Podcast. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's a great podcast. Melting chocolate bars in Ziploc bags pretending they're turds. Yes, that is how I won over my girlfriend Haley's heart. <laughs> I feel like there's a story to that. There is a story to that. A great story. <laughs> a story of love. And... Fake poo. Taylor, so you have been known to do some pretty crazy things to get the right shot. And so can you tell us about the time you asked Olivia to hop in a canoe to get a shot of her paddling, even though she'd never operated a canoe before? Yeah, it was, it was a kayak. It was Oru kayaks. And I just started working with them. Um, so they just sent out some kayaks. And I was trying to get some photos for them. And I was on a road trip with my sister, Olivia. So I don't think she's, I don't know if she's ever been in a kayak before. And <laughs> this was totally my fault. Uh, we're in Jasper and there's this bridge uh, with some bright blue water, the beautiful mountain scene, like really photogenic. It was spring and the water was pretty high. It was a bit dumb of me to, to ask her to go in there, but she, <laughs> she was going and she kind of got a little off balance. Was she standing in it or just no, like, no. Just she like was, in she it? She was, she was yeah, paddling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got a little off balance and 
went a little too close to shore and the water was so high moving so fast um she flipped and she was trying to hang on to the paddle she flipped out was hanging onto a branch on the side like rushing river oh like, my goodness like moving really fast it wasn't like rapids or anything but really fast moving it's so frantic and just though. like holding on trying to hold the kayak and i just like it, i didn't realize what was happening for a second and i was just like hold on like i'm gonna be there in a second like dropped everything ran over to her she was just like holy shit like i'm alive we're all good and thankfully once we got that sorted we knew she was good um i was like okay well now we don't have a kayak and i start my contract with them tomorrow oh my god and i was really embarrassed to reach out to the marketing team and be like i'm sorry but like we the kayak's gone and like i can't i have nothing to shoot anymore they were totally cool they understood and they were able to send another one out thankfully felt horrible like that's a horrible way to start the relationship but oh yeah um me and the marketing guy are great buddies now and really we've done quite a few trips together and really good guy and it was really grateful for that that partnership those things are awesome so here we are over at mount waddington and uh we're all obviously used to seeing the end result of a photographer's hard work um, but the techniques and skills going into the shot can often uh, be overlooked. And so how are you thinking about the shots that you're getting of Mount Waddington right now? Maybe to walk us through like the technical aspect. Well, first of all, I'm trying to be polite and not just ignore you and just be <laughs> eye to the camera the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. So the ice field, the, like the ice fields here are just massive, like, gr like insane. This, you can't even show the scale. I'm glad that there's a second plane here right now photographing this because it might do some justice, but trying to avoid the wings. Um, some of the shots I'll show the wings just to show the plane, but yeah. just trying to find these little zones, kind of have it backlit a little bit. Um, and just right now I have a, a zoom lens on, so I'm kind of the big one. going against what I just said with showing the scale. And right now I'm kind of focusing on some tight, like tight close-ups of the peaks and some of the glacier detail. But eventually I'm going to put on the wide angle and basically just open it up and just try and show this. Uh, when you're shooting from plane, you want to have a higher ISO, a faster shutter speed, uh, kind of lower aperture. It's probably about ISO of 800, 5.6 f-stop, and then you know at least 1500 of the second. Making sure I'm stable uh, as possible and having that sharp shutter speed. But like right now, there's some crazy shadows of the peaks on the ice field. like love to shoot you know kind of some of those details and stuff but i guess that's not super technical that's just more composition right now this is a nice soft glow and my jaw is dropping so let's go back to uh, a pretty pivotal moment during your trip to new zealand where um and, and actually, like, for your entire life then, uh, so you're on a scooter, motorbike thing, um, going through sunset, you're trying to catch a sunset, and one thing leads to another, and uh, you end up seeing your friend Jeff's parents' place for a month recovering, right? Uh, and then you download Instagram. Right. Yep. That's... Walk us through the journey and, and how you and Instagram kind of find each other in as little or as much detail as you want to go into. Uh, okay, so we were volunteering for this guy, Stephen King, uh, doing some conservation work. And we took the quads out to this tree to go watch the sunset right. over the ocean. And we took off our boots to climb. And then it was starting to get dark and we need to get back. And my quad didn't have the light on it, but his did. Right. I was too lazy. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll, like, I'll just go barefoot. Okay. <laughs> and I'm following Critical him. Critical decision. <laughs> following him. And he got too far ahead of me and I couldn't see very well. And I didn't see a stump. And I hit the stump in my quad. And the metal grates where your foot sliced open the bottom of my foot. Ugh. So I didn't know exactly what happened. I just knew I was in a lot of pain. You, you could, and, could you even see it at the time? No, you're just, I, you're just like, I just like I just hurt. I just it hurt to move, and so I was yelling at him because he was so far ahead. And he, he eventually came back. I can't see anything, but he looks at my foot. And he's like, "Oh, it's just a scratch. You're all good, bro. Like, give me your shirt." He's in my shirt. And like, wrap wraps my foot in it. Just and I just scratch. I just have it up on top of my handlebars as I'm driving back. And we get back, and I'm walking up, like hobbling one foot up on the stairs. I go to put pressure on my foot. And they're just the worst excruciating pain. Get up, 
So I, I just go all the way on one foot, sit down, unwrap my foot, and the bottom like part under my big toe, that whole chunk of skin is just hanging off and you can see inside my foot. Oh my goodness. And I was like, just a scratch. Good thing you told me that because like it kept me cool, calm, collected. Yeah, if but, you'd freaked out, it probably would have been worse. But I just had this photo, like thumbs up, like, all right, like this is where we're at. Like call the ambulance. Ambulance comes. It was like a two hour ride to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, basically I, they just stitched it all up and then I couldn't walk on it for like a month. Uh, but I was in New Zealand. Whoa. So now I had all this downtime living with Jeff's parents at their place. And one day my friend, I was talking to him and he's like, there's this new app, Instagram that just came out. It's starting to like, you know, people are starting to use it and stuff. Yeah. To check it out. And I was at a point like I didn't have Facebook. I didn't, I, I was kind of against social media. <laughs> I was like, why were you against it? I just, I just didn't want to use it. Like I just felt like it was like a waste of time and, I just rather yeah. not like the only, I, I, I had it but I never used it like I used it to keep in touch with family and stuff like that and it wasn't until I had a place to share photos like that that I realized how much I enjoyed taking photos um, got back home and just started diving into it like just I was like who else in Edmonton is into this sort of thing and there was these things called insta meets where someone would host a meetup and you would get together with a bunch of other photographers and like minded people and go and take photos and, and so I met a lot of really cool people that I still hang out with today uh, through these meetups and it was just so cool because I got wow. to meet people that were into the same things as me. Now that I was back home in Canada and into hiking and backcountry, I was like, the Rockies are at my doorstep, like it's a four hour drive. Right. And every weekend, four o'clock or five o'clock on Friday, I was out. Go on. Sunday night back, back to work. And you just took like day and, trips to go. And it was just weekend trips to go to the mountains to go hike and then ended up kind of building an audience through there um and now i'm on a podcast with you flying over the coast mountains <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. like that <laughs> so you are a professional photographer but it wasn't always that way. And so you hear a lot of these stories from people who become like a pre professional something, the professional artistic, athletic, whatever it is. And a lot of the times you hear those stories and, and it's like, oh, he was born with a saxophone in his hands or he, you know, she started doing postmodernist oil pastel collages at age three. And, and so you didn't even have a camera until high school. And so I guess when people were asking you that, that, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up question? Like, what were you telling them back in high school? Man, I don't even know. I, I was just plumbing. Like, that, like my parents, my stepdad at the time and my dad, you know, both owned companies. Growing up, I was always working for them, uh, doing the trades. Um, and so that was kind of my destiny. I was like, you know what? I can make good money as a refrigeration mechanic, plumber, and afford to travel. Yeah. Use that travel so that was kind of my set like I, I i didn't really have a set plan i was just a very go with the flow and see what happens so the fact that i was able to pick up a camera and turn that into a career like and develop that passion for it was i was so lucky um i always felt like you know when you're out somewhere somewhere touristy and someone's like oh can you take a photo of us like can you take a photo yeah i always enjoyed like framing it and like it's like you take this beautiful photo of someone and they take like a shitty blurry photo of you. Like I always took a like I always loved just trying to make sure that they got a nice photo. And it wasn't until later like oh, maybe I always kind of had that eye for it. Yeah. Um, but it's all you know subject opinion and what makes a good photo and what doesn't. And So, so the topic of identity comes to mind here. So photography is, it strikes me as something that often kind of starts out as a, a hobby before it kind of becomes um, like anything really deeper. And, and so when you meet someone, of course, they'll ask you, what do you do? And so at what point did you start saying to people, I am a photographer? <laughs> it's funny because I just had so much confidence in like, as soon as I had a camera and I took like one nice photo that looking back on now, it's like nothing special at all. But I took one nice photo. I was like, I'm a photographer. I'm a photographer now. Like, I got shirts made up. I got hats made up. I was like, yeah, I'm a photographer. Like, that's what I am. Like, I was just so confident. Like, I just had so, like, it's funny now because that's probably why I was able to, I was so passionate, like, determined and confident. That I was like, I'm a photographer. This is what I do. Like, 
No kidding. I, hire me. Like, I'll do it. I'm ready. Right. Um, so, I guess, yeah, I was just, from the get-go, I was just so, like, destined that that was what I was going to be. As soon as, like, I got my first camera and, like, got yeah. those first few pictures in, I was like, yep, this is it. So, it's like, by saying it, you're like, well, okay, I now, I, it. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to be accountable to this. And, like, yeah. I guess I have to, like, figure this out. Yeah, and, I mean, it worked. Like, I, I was able to network and meet people and, and make some money from it, you know? Like... People were always there's always people looking for photos and at that time my I didn't know what to charge or anything or I just did it for free because I wanted to build a portfolio and in those early years you kind of have to do what you can to make it work and I was either just shooting friends and family portraits I was shooting for restaurants I was shooting for um, just anything cars like I had a phase where I just tried every genre of photography. Like urban landscape, yeah, boudoir, portrait, uh, wedding, family stuff. Like, I just want to just feel it all out to see what really meshed with me and and uh, what I was lo- loved the most. And it was landscape photography, but it's uh, not always easy to make money that way. So you always <laughs> have to kind of find find the ways. And by just saying like, yeah, I'm a photographer, like I'll do it. It just it just kind of worked. Damn, that's yeah, amazing. I mean, funny, yeah. yeah, it's 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 funny that we're also in a plane like doing landscape photography, and just happens to be your favorite type of photography. Oh, what man. a coincidence! I love it. And I'm actually working on a, a workshop, an online workshop to teach landscape photography with a company called Wildest. Nice. They, they have a workshop platform, and uh, be filming this month. Dude, kind of teaching people how to my my ways of the, the fundamentals of landscape photography. No kidding, that's amazing. So well, super stoked for that. Keep an eye out. Yes, will probably release before, or, but by the time your uh, yeah. your course starts, if you're starts, watching so. this and you want to learn about photography, you know. <laughs> hit up Taylor Bird. Yeah. It's time for the moment that we've all been waiting for: the Instagram rapid fire questions. And so, first up in rapid fire, we've got at Terry Callerbank wants to know uh, anything that pisses him off about amateurs going into film and photography. Um. I don't think there's anything that like pisses me off, um, Harry. Uh, yeah, I mean, you get excited when you're new and like you kind of put in these positions, and you might be with someone who's taking a photo and I've had it before, where you're at this location, you're setting up a shot, and then someone comes right beside you and sets up the exact same shot. So there you go. Don't that, overstep that there. Kind of me, uh, that can kind of be irritating. Is somebody just kind of shooting over your shoulder the whole time? So make sure you. Ask questions, learn, but do your own thing with it too. I hope that helps answer your question. <laughs> At Eric Hiltz is wondering, ask the man how I convince my dad that he is in fact not pregnant. <laughs> how, do, how do I? Uh, it, it might just be. He might have just ate too much. Make sure that he just didn't have a big meal. He's just like. Sometimes you know you get kind of you feel like you're pregnant. You're really bloated. Yeah. Just make just see how much you ate beforehand. Maybe that, that's the, the issue there. I guess I don't know. That's but, a very honest and sincere answer. Yeah. That's I mean, very wholesome. It could happen. Anything's possible. Maybe he's pregnant. Do it. Get a pregnancy test. At um, Pedro Navaya wants to know: Did he purposefully get the hikers to walk in a zigzag? So it looks like a mountain from his shot. You know the shot that he's yeah, talking about uh, no. on the snow. No, uh, is it Pedro? Who's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pedro. Um, no. So when you're ski touring, um, you're basically trying to work your way up the mountain, and instead of going straight up, instead of going straight up a mountain, you want to create switchbacks. So that was a drone shot of basically a switchback in motion. Right. Um, so and then I just kind of might have cropped it or angled it in a way that kind of looks like a graph or something like that mountain um, but that's that's natural that's just going up you just can't tell because it's a top down shot right but if you're looking at it from the side it would be stacked uh, some people would be higher and lower at Silas Egan wants to know I would love to hear what his favorite parts of BC are you can list a couple of them there uh, here's one yeah, from this plate like yeah I've been wanting to see more of that area for years and years, so like this is Waddington. This is, like, this is amazing. <laughs> um, Sunshine Coast, uh, it's home. It's got a special place in my heart. Uh, the Rockies, um, the island, Vancouver Island, the West Coast, up in the Broughton Inlet, and 
that kind of area. Um, all of it. There's something to be found in everybody in the whole province. At M. Johnson uh, wants to know, for new wildlife and travel photographers, uh, what advice would you give for getting started? For any kind of photography, especially that, shoot, shoot, shoot. It's a cliche you hear it all the time probably, but the more time you spend outside in these locations and shooting, the more opportunities you're going you're gonna to come across. Um, so if you're out every day, every night, every chance that you get to be outside documenting and photographing, you're going to stumble upon more opportunities as opposed to if you just go once in a while and you're going to have that one window. That's it. We're getting close to our final destination and the seatbelt sign has been turned on for landing. So Taylor, we'll turn the spotlight over to you to uh, take us home here. Tell the world anything you want to tell them and uh, tell them how to find you. Yeah, um, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you are if you're hearing me right now. Thank you for checking it out and um, yeah, you can find me at just Taylor Michael Burke on Instagram. Taylor Burke is my website. I'm just so grateful to be here and for this opportunity. I know we've been planning this for, since November for months now to see BC from above and to be on your show. Um, I think that's really cool and I'm very grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful you join us. I really, really appreciate it. It's It's been a ton of fun and I think we both got to see something that uh, we've been wanting to check off our bike bucket list for a really long time totally and, and anyone watching this right now sorry my mind is scatterbrained i've probably been all over the place a little bit like, <laughs> seeing some of this stuff now and i'm glad that i'm not photographing some of it just to like fully just soak it in not behind the lens because i feel like i'm not maybe it's altitude i don't know just i feel like i'm going a million miles a moment in my head just trying yeah. to process everything that we've seen and you're gonna see on this video obviously we've already seen some pretty wild scenes so buckle up yeah thank you <laughs> thanks a lot man thanks for joining us ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking you know exactly what to do fasten your seatbelts and subscribe for more